So there has been a lot of discussion for the past few years around CI/CD on how it should be done and what tools to use. Personally, one CI tool that blew my mind is GitLab CI. And this is what I want to talk about in this video by going through my top three favorite features. First, the pipeline, second, the artifacts, and third, the environments. Starting first from a brief description on how to set up a pipeline. A pipeline is a set of instructions which are executed in an order that we define. Those instructions are part of what is called a job, and a job is classified in what is called stages. Stages have two important roles. They define the order of execution, and they allow jobs within the same stage to run concurrently. Assuming that our code is pushed in a repository on GitLab, all we need to do is to add a .gitlab-ci yaml file at the root of the repository. This file defines the stages, the jobs, and the different conditions associated to the jobs. For example, this file defines four stages, build, test, publish, and deploy. And for each of those stages, we have one job associated to it with the same name. So for the build, we have the build job, which use .NET build to build a .NET application. For the test, we have a test job that use .NET test. For publish, we use a published job with .NET publish. And for deploy, we just simulate a deployment by echoing a string. Those jobs also contain conditions. And for example, in those jobs, we define a condition for the job to only run on master branch. The file will then be picked up by GitLab and from the pipeline section of the website, we will be able to see the status of our pipeline. Moving on to the second feature, the artifacts. Our published stage generates libraries and files which are then used to deploy and run the application. Those files all together form what is called an artifact. GitLab offers support to upload and browse by using the artifact property on the job. We define an artifact by providing paths pointing to the folder and files, and GitLab will then make it available from stage to stage. In our example, in the published job, we define an artifact by specifying the output path of .NET publish. We also define that the artifact will expire in two days. This will allow us from GitLab website to browse and understand what has been deployed or even to download locally to examine the content of the artifact. And lastly, moving to the third feature, the environments. So far, we saw how to set up a pipeline and we saw how to store artifacts. While the pipeline is great to identify what has been built and deployed successfully, it doesn't really tell us what is currently deployed in our environment. It tells us which of the pipelines failed or succeeded, but it doesn't exactly tell us what is the current version running in our environment. For that, GitLab has a dedicated section called environments. Environments are automatically created by adding a property in the configuration. All we need to do is specify the name of the environment and it will be created when the pipeline runs. For example, here we create an environment named production. And when we go to the section on the GitLab website, we will see production as an environment. What we can do from the website is see what is the current version running in production. And we also have the possibility to rollback if we wish to rollback. And that's it. Hope you like this video. See you on the next one.